Billy Porter basically shows his ass as a queer capitalist who is sad about the writers an actor strike that recently happened and so now he's doing a bald in a biopic for a cheap fucking cash grab and you're a zionist and you want to benefit from a film about someone who is a staunch anti-zionist and supported palestinian liberation this interview in itself should be enough to get the production of this movie scrapped We have some things to talk about. So it's been in the news lately that Billy Porter is in the works to make a biopic about the famed queer black writer James Baldwin. And if you are a follower of my YouTube channel or you've seen me on TikTok, you know that I'm a big fan of Baldwin. I've traveled to France numerous times. I did an artist residency in Saint Paul de Vence, France, where James Baldwin lived two years ago, and those vlogs are on my channel. I read Giovanni's room every year. I love Baldwin. I read as much as I can about him. I've written a few different viral essays about him. I have been keen on talking about this. And I made a TikTok about a week ago that has gone viral and a few others have gone viral as well, basically talking about what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Billy Porter is a dangerous choice to co-write, co-produce, and lead act in a biopic about James Baldwin. And I want to explain exactly why, because this is so important and it goes beyond clickbait or hot takes. For me, I take this seriously because I'm a black queer contemporary writer. I've traveled in Baldwin's footsteps. I've seen some of the pitfalls of some of his approaches to the way he looks at the world. I've experienced some of the weirdness of being black abroad and navigating politics and feeling a deep awareness of my mortality. And I'm also deeply invested in history to the point where I wrote about James Baldwin in my debut book, When They Tell You To Be Good. And I wrote about how he helped me find the courage to go to France in 2016, how I fell in love for the first time there, how I went to protests, how I started reading more of his work and how his book, Giovanni's Room, gave me the courage to fall in love. And so when I rant about James Baldwin, it's literally not just to get views online it's because i care about him as a figure literally like i don't know if you can see it but up here in my writing room i keep a photo of him he's offered so much to so many people for those that don't know he was born in 1924 in new york city to a mother his stepfather james baldwin had a complicated relationship with his father his his stepfather who was a preacher he was a child preacher himself for a number of years and then he kind of found his way out of the church eventually he moved to greenwich village and started writing articles and book reviews while working at various restaurants and then eventually at the age of 24 in 1948 he went to france for the first time largely because of his impending sense of doom and mortality because of systemic racism in the U.S. He went on to write many acclaimed novels like Another Country, Giovanni's Room, The Fire Next Time, as he wrote Notes of a Native Son. He's written numerous collections of poetry, plays. He even wrote a screenplay based on the autobiography of Malcolm X. Last year, it was announced that Billy Porter was slated to co-produce co-write and lead act in a biopic about James Baldwin. And what I think is interesting about this announcement when I first read it is that the biopic is going to be largely based on David Lemming's biography about James Baldwin. David Lemming knew him for I think close to 25 years. The book has so much intimacy and warmth and clarity and I think it's because it's someone that knew Baldwin, stayed close to him in a lot of ways. In some ways, you could say that this on this gives you some hope. But then we have the travesty, which is Billy Porter's Guardian interview. A few weeks ago, Billy Porter did an interview with the journalist at The Guardian. Those friends people make a hundred million a year. I'm getting six cent checks. It's not okay. Billy Porter on race, recognition, and the Middle East. And Billy Porter basically shows his ass as a queer capitalist who is sad about the writers and actor strike that recently happened. And so now he's doing a bald in a biopic for a cheap fucking cash grab and awards grab. And one of the first quotes in the interview in the third paragraph of this already, in case you're wondering, yes, this is basically how Porter speaks 100% of the time. Over the course of our 45-minute interview, 
P. Porter compares himself with the four-time Oscar nominee Viola Davis on three separate occasions. He punctuates his musings on a ceasefire in the Middle East with the word doll. What? And then we go down further into the interview. Porter says, our deals are going away, our jobs are going away, everyone's downsizing, but the people in the C-suite are still making money, he says. He's still frustrated that there's no accountability for the people who ran the business into the ground. Whose fault is it that the business can't sustain itself and is going to implode, he says, his eyes steely behind thick-rimmed glasses. Streaming destroyed the artist's ability to make money, our ability to participate in capitalism, being an artist, we're always freelance and very often blue collar. That it took so long for the streamers to negotiate terms with SAG after Porter says has resulted in a shrinking middle class of working actors. Those friends people are making a hundred million a year, he exclaims. I'm getting six cent checks. It's not okay. What is extremely messed up about this portion of this interview is that Billy Porter is essentially equating his creative freedom to pursue a biopic about James Baldwin with the way that the elite have taken things away from working class actors in terms of the wages that they pay them. I don't think this is a fair equivocation. You not having money doesn't mean that you should make a bad biopic about James Baldwin. And a big thing that Porter kind of posits in this interview and Porter talked about a lot during the SAG actor strike is that a lot of actors don't make a lot of money. They make cents or dollars in their residual checks for films and roles. It's important for actors to have more autonomy and more stability. The reason that this is not the best thing to kind of talk about in terms of a Baldwin biopic is because you being poor does not mean you get to make subpar artistic choices that reflect badly on history because you need money or because you want to claim. James Baldwin was probably way poorer than you ever were and was supporting a family of five or six or seven people. But still, Baldwin stay true to kind of a moral compass that was critical of capitalism, had solidarity with people in other countries and other marginalized nations, and he was critical of how Hollywood and the mainstream tries to portray black people. Goes on to say, now he's putting these skills as a screenwriter to work, co-writing a biopic based on the life of revolutionary writer and activist James Baldwin, in which he will also star. His motivation is simple. If not me, who? I've been sitting around and waiting for people for people to tell the Langston Hughes story, the James Baldwin story. Anyone black and queer, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done waiting. I'll do it myself. The audacity, right? He says, who's going to tell it better than the black gay man who embodies that in today's A's? It's such an important story to tell. And I feel so blessed to be in this time where it will get told. Porter says that Baldwin's story could not have been told before this time because nobody gave a fuck, but that the executives are wiser now to the fact that stories catering to marginalized audiences can be hugely lucrative. Porter goes on to say, if there's green money attached to it, executives will care. That's always across the board, he says. As often becomes clear during our conversation, Porter seems to blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and then Porter goes on to say, how do we on the, this end acknowledge that the color is green? It's not black, it's not white, it's not yellow, it's not Muslim, the color is green. Not all skin folk or kin folk, not all black queer people align in terms of how they look at history. Porter, you are a part of the artistic elite. Yes, you are struggling for wages and you're still black and queer and you exist at these intersections, but you still represent a part of the elite. And so to equate yourself with James Baldwin, who lived on the margins, who traveled to other places, who lived with other people that were marginalized, talked to them, um, engaged in movements deeply on a political level, wrote journalistically, was incisive about the structural wrongs happening against us and how identity becomes a trap. For you to equate that with your modern contemporary art bourgeois bullshit journey to get your EGOT is ridiculous and it is really fucking offensive in terms of James Baldwin's memory. And then for me to then turn it into this queer capitalism thing where it's less about representation and more actually about what kind of story you can tell in order to get executives to invest in your project. Where's the artistic integrity? That is exactly what James Baldwin was all about. So not only are you diluting and staining his memory, but you're doing it on a production level and on a storytelling level, I imagine.
because the color is green and that's all that really matters, right? And Porter goes on to say, Barbie is green. Greta Gerwig got all the fucking green. She can do whatever she wants because they want that. I'm trying to figure out for myself what this looks like because we have to understand too, it's a business. It's show business and business is the bigger word. We can't lose sight of that. Also messy. Meeting the demands of capitalism, which has already subjugated black people and queer people in the first place in order to tell our stories. It's using the master's tools to escape the master's house. So maybe you don't read enough Baldwin. Maybe you don't read enough Audre Lorde. Maybe you don't read enough Black history, but you should understand that folding to the American project and folding to capitalism in order to tell a story in a deluded, butchered way, especially for a figure like James Baldwin, is fucking evil. And following the green, following capitalism is going to make you an enemy of your own community. Baldwin, of course, was a strong advocate for the right of Palestinians. Porter has been staunchly supportive of Israel in the past, opposing the cultural boycott of the film festival in Tel Aviv in 2021. And he was one of 700 celebrities who signed an open letter last year asking Hollywood to support Israel in its retaliation against Gaza. Later on in the piece, Porter says, First and foremost, I'm supportive of a two-state solution. The second thing is, this is not my hill. I'm not going to die on it. It's not mine. I'm not Jewish, nor am I Palestinian. What's going on over there is horrific. The choices that we in America have made are wrong. Please don't make me a poster child for that. I don't want to be in the conversation because I don't know enough about it. I'm in support of my Jewish friends and my Palestinian friends, he says. It's a two-state solution that's been going on for thousands of years over there. I don't know. He says, letting out a nervous giggle. What I do know is that we don't need to continue bombing over there. I know we should stop doing that. I do believe that. And the Palestinians, not Palestinians, what are the people called who started this shit? The extremists. So bad. It's so offensive. Thousands of years, Israel was formed in the 1940s. The reason that this is so bad is one, shows that Billy Porter is willing to be in direct political contradiction with James Baldwin, despite benefiting off of his legacy, despite wanting to quote James Baldwin during his speeches and, and, and award shows, which is an obvious sign of co-optation for the wrong reason. And then two, to speak on an ongoing genocide, to speak on an ongoing genocide where women, children, men are being bombed, tortured, starved, having aid taken away from them, being targeted and killed while they're receiving aid, having state powers all around the world collude to not give them the rights that they deserve as human beings, to not even read enough on this situation to accurately describe it and then to speak on it in an interview where you're saying, I'm not Jewish, nor it's it's such an old fucking head, coon black people shit to say. It's basically saying, I don't need to care about what's happening over there. I need to worry about my own. It's so fucking selfish for someone like Billy Porter to say this because you want other people to care about you and your identity and your history and your significance, yet you don't want to advocate for other people in other places that have way less than you and are dehumanized in ways that you can't even fucking imagine. How dare you? In the name of James Baldwin. You're a Zionist and you want to benefit from a film about someone who is a staunch anti-Zionist and supported Palestinian liberation? I'm flabbergasted. I'm honestly... This interview in itself should be enough to get the production of this movie scrapped. And to say that you don't know about this stuff, you don't care to read about it, you're doing the work of white supremacy by not reading about history and then misconstruing it with your platform because it helps you fucking profit. The reason that this interview is so bad is because it is a clear sign of where we are in terms of queer people having ownership of our histories and stories. And this is what is messy about when elite art spaces and the bourgeois art spaces, there is still this act of commodification of queer and radical history. We see films like Judas and the Black Messiah depicting the assassination of Fred Hampton while also featuring rappers on the soundtrack like Jay-Z, who is a staunch capitalist 
and literally will wear blood diamonds on him and his wife's neck in a, in a video, but still claim that they're like black nationalists or whatever. We also see biopics like the recent Bob Marley One Love, which has been criticized by especially the Jamaican community for the lead actor in it being cast to play Bob Marley, and he's not Jamaican. Films like Stonewall, which came out a number of years ago, which famously depicts the Stonewall riots, the beginnings of the queer liberation movement, where in New York at Stonewall Inn, police came in and started harassing and communities resisted and trans people resisted and threw the first brick. This movie shows a white guy instigating the riot. People can weaponize their identities in order to make money when it is convenient for them. They don't want to stick up for the messier or more radical parts of that history. It isn't aligned with what Hollywood wants. This biopic is very much an Oscar grab or an awards grab from him. Co-optation serves capitalism. When we co-opt histories, we reduce the complexity of them. We shut off the masses from having a more complex understanding of the past and why people resisted, why they were critical about the things that were happening in their time and place in human history. And it leads to historical eraser. It leads to historical reductionism. There are so many signs of oncoming fascism and censorship, whether it be book bannings or teachers being forced to snitch on their students for using correct pronouns for them. The state is trying to intervene in how we learn about culture, how we learn about identity and whether or not we have a clear understanding of what's happened to us on a historical level. And so these biopics, when done poorly, actually aid the state. They aid the elite. They aid white supremacy because they give us a false understanding of history that makes us more complicit to the status quo of the present. And what I really wish for is a new approach to Baldwin, one that turns away from cheap romanticism or nostalgia, turns towards his deeply lyrical and conflicted writing about our inability to love each other or ourselves. A Baldwin biopic could explore his deeply personal relationship with his best friend Eugene Worth, who passed away a few years before he left New York for Paris, and who was very much someone that Baldwin was in love with, and eventually became the character of Rufus in another country. There are so many opportunities, film concentrating on just the civil rights movement with a few clips or grabs from other parts of his life would be a real disservice to someone who is complex. I think rightfully so, if they were alive today, they would be critical about many of the things that Billy Porter is slodging through in this interview, and it's why I think this Baldwin biopic should not happen. I think this is going to be a part of uh, putting an end to Baldwin nostalgia series. I want to delve more into some of my own ex personal experiences navigating Baldwin, nostalgia, his flaws, and hopefully we'll have some updates on where this biopic is and whether or not I could be lead acting in it instead of Billy Porter. So. Have a nice day and stay angry, y'all. I'm one of the very few dark people in the world who have a voice. That means something which no white writer can mean at this point in the world's history. And I can't really escape that. I don't think I should even try. <laughs>